now for our story. Aunt Mary Lane had come into town this afternoon to do the weekend shopping and to get some thread for the quilt she was making as a surprise for her niece, Peggy Douglas. She was pretty tired by 5.30. As she left Swanson's department store with her arms full of bundles, she was surprised to see her old friend, David Bowman, Kit Mead's uncle. David gallantly relieved Aunt Mary of her parcels, walked with her to the little pickup truck, and stowed the things in back. It was the first time in a long while that David had seen Aunt Mary alone. He had a lot of things to talk over with her, so he persuaded her to have dinner with him. After convincing her that Peggy and Lefty Larkin could manage for themselves this once, even though she weren't there to prepare the evening meal. Now the two friends have just finished a leisurely dinner. Well, David, this has been quite a treat for me. That was a delicious dinner. It's been wonderful for me, Mary. I shall seldom get a chance to have an evening with you. We ought to do this more often. Perhaps we should. <laughs> I feel like such a lady of leisure eating a dinner I didn't cook. And on top of that, not having to worry about the dishes. Well, I've always maintained, Mary, that you work too hard. You ought to have someone in to help you. Oh, my goodness. I don't know what I'd do with him if I did. Besides, Peggy helps a lot. And, of course, Lefty. Mm. How is Lefty, by the way? He's just fine. I've missed him. Usually he drops in at least a couple of times a week for a little get-together. But lately, I don't see hide nor hair of him. I know. It's ridiculous, too, because I know perfectly well that Lefty misses you every bit as much as you miss him. But you know Lefty. He can be very obstinate. Much as I'm fond of him, I have to admit that. <laughs> I guess you're right. But in a way, it's a virtue. The kind of obstinacy Lefty has goes hand in hand with a very deep loyalty. It's that loyalty that causes him to be upset now. Loyalty toward Peggy. Lord, how he adores that girl. Yes. Hmm. He's still angry about Bill Mead. Even though Bill's past actions are all explained now that Kit's returned, and the baby, and all that. Lefty can't forgive Bill for having hurt Peggy, whether Bill could help himself or not. That's too bad. Yes. David, it's really a pity that he's so unreasonable about your giving Bill the job at the bank. Oh, well, as to that part of it, I have some hope that Lefty will come around eventually. I think he'll come to understand that I offered Bill the job because he's exactly the right man for it. Well, I'm sure he is too, David. From what I've heard, it ought to work out just fine. I know Bill's very enthusiastic about it. Of course, it's going to be pretty hard on the boy at first, jumping into a new job. What with his personal life being all upset. Yes, I suppose it will be. Bill came by to see me, you know. He told me his plans for a divorce. Oh? Yes, David. He asked my advice. Oh, yeah. But I didn't feel I should express an opinion. It's something he has to decide himself. Yes, it's a ticklish question. Although, frankly, I don't see that there's much else he can do. I was afraid at first that Bill might have had Peggy in the back of his mind. That he might be getting a divorce because of her. Yes, I know what you mean, Mary. But as much as he told me that, uh, didn't even enter into it. Bill has changed a lot recently. He seems to have grown, matured. I feel that he has too, Mary. I expect great things of that boy once he gets his stride. Mm-hmm. The most tragic part of this whole situation is the baby. Bill's terribly proud of the child. Yeah. I... I've been worried about that child. So have I, David. I certainly hate to think of the baby being brought up by the Calverts. When I think of what that environment did to Kit, and now Kit's child, and the worst of it is that the first few years of a child's life can make all the difference. Yes, I, I feel that too, David. Early impressions are so important in a child's psychological development. That's right, Mary. <laughs> when I was bringing up Randy and Peggy, we didn't know so much about those things as people do now. Mm -hmm. But I just sort of figured them out for myself. 
It's just based on common sense, that's all. Mm -hmm. Well, Mary, <clears throat> I'm afraid there's not much anyone can do about the present situation. Do you know how Bill feels? About what? About the baby. He's very proud of the child, I know. But he's never mentioned the baby in connection with the divorce. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I know he's mighty interested in his son's welfare. Oh? Has he said anything to you? It isn't so much anything he's said, but I can tell. I'm not quite sure what would be the best thing for him to do once the divorce goes through, if it goes through. You mean uh, about the baby? Mm-hmm. Oh, David, it's... It's a pity that the thing has to happen at all, that there has to be a divorce. Because no matter how you look at it, no matter what the reasons, a divorce represents failure. And it can be so tragic when children are involved. It certainly can. I suppose the reason for most divorces is that people go into marriage too lightly without stopping to consider what a solemn commitment a marriage is. That's true, Mary. Oh, it's so hard to be sure. Who are we to sit in judgment? But when a marriage is blessed by a child, it becomes, well, a, a sort of a sacred trust. A pact two people enter into with the understanding that they'll do their very best to make a go of it. The question of personal happiness is almost overshadowed by that responsibility. If they can only maintain a decent, harmonious way of living... But, Mary, you know that couldn't happen in the case of Bill and Kit. Even though she's my own niece, I have to be honest about it. Well, of course you do, David. And it is somewhat different in Bill's case. It certainly is. He was practically forced into marriage with Kit by a series of tricks. Yes, I know, but... Mary, just for my part, I'm positive this divorce is the best thing for him. And he's not going into it lightly, either. When I talked to him the other day, he was quite upset, worried. I I only hope I can help him some way. Perhaps you can. He'll need help. You and I are just about the only people that boy has to turn to. Well, if being able to foretell just about what Ben's likely to do, which way he's likely to jump will help any... I can certainly do that. Hmm. It's too bad that a man like Ben has to be known by his meanness and selfishness. <laughs> I wish I had your capacity for wishing good even to your enemies, Mary. It's difficult for me to be so understanding. <laughs> you sound almost as though you feel sorry for Ben. In spite of what he's done to you and your family. I am sorry for him, David. Evil plans harm the plotter most. And that, I'm afraid, is going to be true of Ben. And of Kit, too, finally. You mean if Bill does get a divorce, it will amount to a sort of retribution for both of them? A punishment, in a sense? Yes, that's part of what I mean, David. Perhaps a small part. Well, Mary, when I think of my sister Kathleen, of how Ben treated her after he married her, and of what he's made of Kit, and what they both put Bill me through... All I can say is they deserve to be punished. I know how you feel, David. But in any case, whatever happens, in regard to Bill and Kit, we know we can count on the boy to do the best he can, to try to do the right thing. I'm sure we can, David. I only hope he doesn't run into too many obstacles along the way, because, Mary, this isn't going to be easy. I have a feeling Ben may have something up his sleeve. The two old friends fell silent then, thinking sadly of the muddled lives, the unhappiness that one man's selfish pride had caused, wondering what he might be planning to do next. David Bowman, thinking of the hurt Ben Calvert had done his own sister, repeated over to himself again the words Aunt Mary had quoted. Evil plans harm the plotter most. He found himself wishing with all his heart that he could see this happen. That for once, Ben Calvert's evil plans would boomerang. 